every story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories around the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. A very good evening to you and thank you for joining us in Court of a Primetime News. I am Elijah Bakil Lantaji. In our major stories, death toll in our sponsored attacks in Paris, France, reaches 129 as French presidents declare a state of emergency. So in this package, the Department of State Services again naps another high-profile Boko Haram terrorist, Dana Diabdemai, in Medjugorje. The whole All Progressives Congress says the PDP must repent and return looted funds by members before Nigerians will take it seriously. And outside Nigeria, in Libya, the United Nations, the United States rather, says an airstrike has killed leader of the ISIS terror group, Abu Mabio. Thank you for joining us this night. A state of emergency has been declared across France after attacks in Paris killed at least 128 people. In what President Francis Hollande described as an act of war carried out by the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant Group. Hollande and the German Foreign Minister were watching a friendly football match between France and Germany there when the attacks occurred. The coordinated assault came as France, a member of the U.S.-led coalition waging airstrikes against ICU fighters in Syria and Iraq was on high alert for attacks. The ICU group later released an undated video threatening to attack France if bombings of its fighters in the Middle East continued. The group's foreign media arm, al Hazard's media center, made the threat through Oman for calling French Muslims to carry out attacks. Paris Public Prosecutor Francio Marlins said the death toll was at least 128 and that about 200 people were injured and 90 of them seriously. Now, President Mohamed Buhari says he received with great shock and profound sadness news of the dastardly and heinous terrorist attacks on innocent civilians in Paris. President Buhari, in a statement signed by his special advisor on media, Femi Additional, says he extends his heartfelt condolences on behalf of the government and people of Nigeria to French President Francio Hollande and the people of France. The president also extends sincere condolences to the families, relatives and friends of the unfortunate victims of the callous attacks. He ordered that the barbaric attacks constituted an unacceptable affront to all human values and civilized norms. The president says as a country which has borne the terrible human cost of terrorist attacks, Nigeria stands in full solidarity with the government and people of France as the mourn those who have sadly lost their lives in the attack on Paris. But the Department of State Security, DSS in Bernie State, has arrested one of the suspected Boko Haram kingdoms, whose photograph is among the 100 recently published by the army authorities. Confirming the arrest in a statement, Acting Director of Army Public Relations, Sonny Husman, said the Boko Haram suspect is number 26 of the published wanted list and gave his name as Daladi Abdullahi. 
the renewed zeal according to the release has been yielding desired results as the brand new state's command of the Department of State Services has this morning arrested another suspect high another suspected high profile Boko Haram terrorist Danadi Abdullah at Mondoganari area of Meduguri metropolis. And the Minister for Solid According Minerals, Kayode Faimi, has brought to rate of the commitment of the Muhammad Buhari administration to make exploration and exploitation of mineral deposits in Nigeria account for greater part of the country's income. Faimi, however, wants illegal miners to desist as he says er the era of impunity is over. Rashid Rashid has more. According to statistics, Solid minerals in Nigeria contribute less than 1% into the nation's gross domestic product, GDP, despite having 44 key mineral resources in abundance. However, with the stated drive of the Muhammad Buhari administration to diversify the country's economy, Kayode Fayemi, the Minister for Solid Minerals, says the time to raise the bar is now. Solid minerals accounts for just 0.3% of the GDP of Nigeria. I don't want to give a figure of where I want us to be uh, by the time Mr. President completes his assignment as president. But clearly, we really need to be moving in the direction of contributing, at the very minimum, 5% uh, to 10% of, of the GDP. The minister also read out riot act to illegal miners. There are people operating outside of the rule of law including in the strategic mineral sector. I think it's time for them to start packing their bags. People operating in legal mines, we would assist them to mainstream their activities. But if they insist to continue along the path of illegality, then they're going to face the maximum wrath of the law. With the Buhari administration eyeing agriculture and solid minerals as alternative to petrodollars, the time ticks from now as Nigerians await the wonders of these ministers. Rashid Rashid, or TV News, Ishan Ekiti. The All Progressives Congress has asked the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to atone for its mistakes of the last 16 years by returning public funds allegedly looted by its members. The APC added that this is the only way Nigerians will believe that the party is serious about rebranding. Acting National Public Secretary of the party, Timmy Frank, says in a statement in Abuja, that anything short of PDP atoning for its mistakes and returning the looted funds will amount to playing the ostrich. Frank says the PDP is a sinking party which cannot be redeemed and will soon disappear from the nation's political space. He says that the opposition party remarks on the composition of President Muhammad Buhari's cabinet is a clear sign of the frustrations of a political party headed for extinction. The North Central Zone Coalition of the All Progressives Congress support groups has stood for a violence-free conduct of Kogi governorship elections on November 21. Musa Tigba, who is the national leader of the coalition, made the call at a news conference in Lokoja, on where he also urged supporters and other members to show violence before, during and after the election. The group urged the electorate to take a critical look and evaluate the four-year tenure of Aljogbe and the 12 years of the People's Democratic Party's governments of the state and make an objective, informed choice come November 21. It also decried the insinuation by the PDP-led state government that local government workers were owed arrears of salaries from 2001 to date. He said Aldo's government from 1999 to 2003 paid 100% of salaries and was up to date to the time he left office as governor. On the coalition, Notigo said, after the party primaries, the various groups came together, subsuming all their individual interests to ensure the success of the party at the polls. 
as the president of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari, has inaugurated his cabinet, charging to be more proactive in fulfilling the chain mantra of his administration. The state of the nation remains an issue of discourse as more reactions continue to show the agitation for sovereign state of Biafra. Our correspondent, Manuel J. Hesmo. In his inaugural speech, as he assigns portfolios to new ministers, the president of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari, promised Nigerians that his administration will reduce the poverty level of the nation to tackle insurgency to enhance better safety of the citizenry. We intend to pursue policies that will generate massive employment for millions of our youth. We shall also continue with greater determination and focus to pursue our goals of ensuring improved security for our country and its citizens and without letting up on our fight against corruption. Our commitment to defeat Boko Haram and all the threats it constitutes remains as strong as ever. Despite the promises made by the president, there has been more agitations for some Nigerians who believe that deplorable state of the nation is one of the reasons they are calling for a sovereign state of Biafra. All Nigeria's youth, we are suffering. The federal government of Nigeria fail us. We don't have, we don't have our, our future. We don't have future. We, every day by day, in radio and in television, we hear billions of dollars. And not in Naira. Dollars, when you convert dollars to Naira, billions of dollars to Naira, there is, it is it, it, trillions of Naira. And yet, all this money, where are they? About the rally which is going on in the country. And it's what we want. We need that very freedom because we have seen that we are not a one Nigeria. And any country who has fought civil war, after, after 30 years, they are free to go on their own. And we are more than the 30 years now where we fight this uh, civil war. Why can't, us, why can't they allow us to get our freedom? Look at my age now. I still do salary work. I collect 30,000 naira. They are using me like a, like a cow. We don't want more Nigeria again. We want Nigeria to divide. We, 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 me, I, me, I, I'm an OPC. I'm one of the, they are commandants for OPC. Yes, we support, we support uh, Biafra. Let, let them go. We, we are going to declare our dual republic. Six months after, if there is no any change, anything can happen in this country. Because people are suffering. We cannot continue like this. These are the people that they are ruling out in 1979. They are the same people, set of people we are there. For these Nigerians, they believe that the call for a sovereign state will not solve the challenges bedeviling the nation. Talking of Biafra now, it's not what matter. It's the problem of this country that matter, and the problem of this country concern everybody. The way Igbo are feeling, they are feeling bad about this country. The same thing we are feeling. Even the Northern people, the same thing they are feeling Nigeria is not good. So if Biafra now say, because Nigeria has problem now, that they are going, but when Nigeria is in Mudumudu, they no go. When they give Nigeria to Azikwe, as the first president of this country, they no go. When they give, uh, when Agui Rossi do all this, nine bring all that war that caused Biafra, it's not Nigeria problem. Uh, but the children of nowadays, they believe that that Biafra fight is because of the problem of Nigeria that make Igbo people to fight. Now, between 67 and 70, Ojuku ran away. Biafra does not pay. I believe in one Nigeria. One Nigeria right from the days of uh, Lord Lugard. So Nigeria should be one. Nigeria should not divide. As the administration of President Mordobori promises more dividends of democracy, it is expected that the security arm of government will leave no stone unturned in order to nip this in board. Emmanuel Ajayi, Court TV News, Lagos. Senate President Bukola Saraki hosted a breakfast meeting in honor of a World Bank delegation led by Nicole Klingon and the Wellbeing Foundation Africa, headed by its wife, Toi Saraki. A statement from his media office, Scott Sunu, has used the occasion to call on the international financial institutions to intervene in saving the nation's health sector so as to prevent further waste of lives through maternal and infant mortality. Saraki says as part of efforts to stimulate discussion on key solutions to systemic failures in the nation's public health care system. Note that all of the news to improve on provision of facilities, manpower and service delivery in the crucial sector should be explored. In her own speech on the occasion, Mrs. Saraki, who is president of WBFA, 
called on the federal government to increase budgetary allocation to the health sector to help fight the alarming rates of maternal and infant mortality in the country. She decried a situation where an estimated 900,000 women and children still die annually in the country from preventable diseases. This is still a quarter of a prime time news. We'll take a quick break. I'll be back on more stories. Please join us again. This is what the people are saying. You don't run a big economy with generator. They need to do more in terms of energy and power. Many things to do for this Nigeria. About lights, water, and new TT. For Nigerians that are not gullible, we know that good laws are done nothing good for this country. We already won the election eh? convincingly. They talk to our husband that you should keep promise oh, about what you said oh. and because people are watching you. You know, another election is coming. Because some people were strong for good land. We'll be strong man. You don't die. This nation is moving forward. The best is going to take place. The people giving voice to the voiceless. Is it what, 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 what crazy? Or talk crazy? Or what type of crazy is that? Except crazy. Seems making the headlines. Black Maria is to, is to carry criminals, taking looters, that are in government today. Sometimes it gets confrontational. Stop you in the face. Excuse me, don't put words into my mouth. Whatever it is, that will bring our military to the support. I said to help me. Cold digest. I want to know why I should be believing them. Every weekday, we bring all of these together and take them to the court of public opinion. Everybody has the right in Nigeria. Where you are the judge. This is still a court of a prime time news. A quick reminder of a major stories. Death toll. In our sponsored attacks in Paris, France, which is 129, as French presidents declare state of emergency. The Department of State Services again naps another high profile Boko Haram terrorist, Daladi Abdullah, in Medjugorje. The All Progressives Congress says the PDP must repent and return looted funds by members before Nigerians will take it seriously. Now for more on the news and other programs, can you visit our Facebook page at www.thefacebook.com forward slash Call TV News. You can follow us on Twitter at Call TV News NG. Also visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash core TV, live a space then news. Some of the tasks before the new power minister, Babatu de Fashila, in the sector were during laid bare the two day public hearing on the privatization process in Abuja. The former minister, Bela Sunaman, had set the ball rolling the faults in the process, but the real public enterprises see nothing wrong with it. It was a culmination of a process that began with the inauguration of the ad hoc committee by the Senate President Bukola Saraki in September before it was suspended. After a day of little activity, the second day saw former power minister Bilo Sulaiman taking the podium to pick holes in the privatization process. He made a lengthy presentation that touched on the upper sojourn years and how the process was faulty from the outset. He has done nothing to Nigerian politics except talk, talk, talk. So he convinced himself. Now, this is waiting for his best hour. It's not going to give power to Nigeria. I'm going to do something against the law because the law that was signed says that we should not invest a generation. He said, leave them. That gave the power of NIP. NIPP came into existence because Nigeria
they realize no investors were coming. The former minister also does not see the difference between the pre privatization here and what's on ground at present. One of the cardinal requirements of BPE to these people is that they should, they should uh, put uh, prepaid meters virtually everywhere so that people cannot get crazy bills. They should uh, try to separate transformers that are overloaded. They should have a new Let somebody tell us, are they doing this? Are they doing enough? And if they are doing enough, or they are not doing enough, when are they going to do this? So that this long journey with all the laws that are going to be in our heads, are they the right people? That's my question. Some of the people at the public hearing also had their say on the past situation in the country. I keep hearing this rumor that the major reason why NEPA never worked was because there were investors who wanted to invest in the power sector but they couldn't get license. And because of that, they went into stone kick generator importations. And they will come and bribe NEPA officials, like those of you who were in the hymn of affairs, to ensure we don't have power so that they can sell their generators. The BPE management was on hand to put up our defense, but this did not seem to impress the senators. This was given in the, in the National Postal Center information is eliminated. We attain the highest generation and the highest capacity of TCM to evacuate such high level of power. What does that tell you? That something has changed. Achieving 4,800 in 2015 is a cause of celebration. Now, what we are saying is that there was a plan in place that we were supposed to achieve all that. 2020 was supposed to have achieved 20, 2020 was supposed to have achieved 40,000 megawatts. 2020 is only five years away. If in 10 years we couldn't achieve less than. 2000, they couldn't achieve more than 2,000 or 3,000 megawatts. How can we now achieve the 40,000 megawatts that we all yearn for? The senators are convinced that government officials who were to monitor the process saw their hands by receiving gifts from the people they were to supervise. They didn't say if sanction will be meted out to the hearing officials, but chances are that many Nigerians will be looking forward to the report that will emanate from the power probe. Now the residents of Abata Jagun community located in Okelele area of Ilona West local government of Kwara State, where girl erosion has become the major threat to their lives and property, have called on both the state and federal government to come to their aid. Our correspondent Rashid Rashid has made the support. This is Abata Jagun community in Loring West local government area of Kwara State and it's under the threat of gully erosion for five years and counting with no government attention. Omomiji Kuranga is the chairman of the community. He says the state government needs to urgently seek for the assistance of the federal government if it cannot cope with the challenge posed to the community by the erosion which keeps getting worse on a daily basis. Honestly, the gully erosion is so embarrassing, so saddening, so, you know, we know it is natural, but uh, we want to seriously appeal to the state government to quickly do something about this. It is beyond the power of the state government because I know the limb pulse of the government for now. It has to be the federal government that will have to come to our rescue. But we cannot do that except the state government knows what is really happening. And your coming is a blessing for us. So I'm sure the state government, you know, after seeing this, we quickly you know, go back to the drawing board and see what can be done. Either to appeal to the federal government or to see what can quickly be done to elevate the sovereign of the people. Because those houses can easily be ravaged if there is any further rainfall. Uh. For Yusuf Zabora, a resident of the community, his fears is on the economic impact of the erosion, especially when it rains. This erosion, it has been passed for the, even it has been done like this for the first five years. That uh, normally, if the rainfall, we people here, we don't normally be in rest. Because uh, the river, uh, the erosion, normally, uh, normally 
uh, used to uh, people will not cannot easily cross about. So please, we appeal to the state government to see to the community so that they will be able to help our people to do these uh, quarters. While also appealing to both the state and federal government to take it as a matter that needs urgent attention to rescue the community and protect lives and property. During the rain, if you are here, everybody will just stand up with the fear that these citizens can come and sweep away their house and their houses. So many of our animals have been washed away by gully erosions. So many of the chickens, so many of the goats, including women who have been safe. He has been sweeping so about two people see away. We can, we, can, we can find them away. Totally. So, if, so it's economic wise, it's not good. If big government if government can come to our head here, it will reduce our expenditures in terms of transportation. Vehicle cannot pass here. Roadside cannot pass here. Motorcycle cannot pass. Once they get to this point, they will turn back. The people of Abata community in Ukelele, Lauren West local government area, continue to wait on the response of both the federal and state governments, even after five years of waiting. Rashid Rashid, Court TV News, Ilori. And now in a dual state where the state governor Adam Zashiomale says the state is yet to receive the $75 million World Bank loan recently approved for the state. Zashiomale discussed this in the new journey colloquium organized by the state government to round off activities marking its seventh year in office. He said this clarification became necessary to instill confidence in the people. That the state's government's ability to pay salaries up to date is not based on the loan, but on prudent management of resources. Governor Chomale noted that governments and governors are not value free, adding that the way forward is to focus on continued development of every sector of the economy. In our show state, it appears the last has not been heard on the payment of outstanding pensions of pensioners in the state. This time around, the leadership of the pensioners in Ife, Jesha, Senator Districts, say the Osho state government is yet to pay about seven months arrears to the pensioners. Addressing newsmen in Leife, Osho state, chairman of the union, Sumola or Defisayo, accused the government of not disbursing the bailout fund given by the federal government, as well as stipulated. He also says the pensioners reject the bi-monthly verification exercise introduced by the Oshun State Government, describing it as a rigorous exercise for the older citizens. For the Oshun State Government abolished the non-payment of pension for seven months, saying the state government has cleared the salaries of workers as well as pensions to the month of August as agreed in a memorandum of understanding signed by leadership of the label. In the bailout fund has been given out to Oshun State Government to clear the mess which she has created for herself about three months ago. There are insinuations that Oshun's bailout fund has been fixed in three different banks from specified months, while pensioners are dying as, and are suffering untold hardship. Is this our own style of anti-corruption? Is this change we are shouting about? The call now is on well-meaning Nigerian women abroad to plead to the federal government on our behalf to use the bailout fund to pay all our standing pension allowances, arrears, and gratuity as specified by the federal government. When we apply for bailout, we put all the outstanding pensions, gratuity, contribution pension, and things like that into it. But what we were given was far, far less than 50% of our requests. In spite of that, we ensure that pensioners were paid once we pay salary. Again, I want to tell you that we've paid July, June, July, August salary, and we have paid, in line with that, the pensioners as well. That's based on the agreement we would labor. So it, will not, it is not correct for anybody to have accused this government of uh, not utilizing bailout. 
The issue of single parenting, don't I think the African society of France art seems to be gaining acceptance gradually. Her correspondent Syria could met with a group of single mothers under the ages of exceptional moms in Lagos. This group of single parents with the name exceptional mothers seem not ready to be held down by their circumstance as they defy all odds to rise above the stigmatization of societal values and prejudice. With the pressure that comes with raising a child alone, the convener of this forum, Corede McGregory, believes this is a platform to encourage others on the challenges that come with single parenting. More of the reason we had to put this together, single parenting is happening. What are we going to do about it? We can just keep watching and act like it's not happening. We need to face it. And another reason is I've seen people that have given birth that ended their lives there. But you giving birth is not a crime, it's not a disease, it's not a sin. You can do better things with your life. And we hope that through this gathering, be able to reach out to more people that are in this position. It's not a crime to be pregnant and not be married. But I always say something, you're not just single, you're single, but you're double. A single father, Olarewaju Agbola, also used the occasion to address the myriads of neglect that comes with single parenting. Yeah, it wasn't a sweet experience, if I could say. Um, I have my first uh, issue when I was in, when I'm living in secondary school. So I think it's called, we call that, this, in our part of the world, they call it mistake. <laughs> But the second one came out of my stupidity, because I'll call it stupidity. Yeah, so fine, as in, I'm grateful to God anyway, was after the second one came, I concluded I'm not going to get married anymore. So, and I felt there's no woman that's going to stay with somebody that is, hasn't a single father or something. But I'm not finding, I didn't find it difficult as a man to engage, have a dating or stuff like that because I'm a man. So I find it quite easy because I could talk to a girl, they could listen to me. But once they hear I have kids, like, ah, no, their parents are not going to allow that to happen. Other participants also had this to share. When I got pregnant, I knew that my family would be supportive because that's the way my family is. So... Now people ask me, well, how come you didn't get an abortion? And it was because I, I wasn't, I wasn't desperate enough because I knew it wasn't the end of my life. I knew I had changed my life in a very permanent way, but I didn't think that my life was over because I knew that my family would have my back. Parenting is hard work. I wouldn't encourage anybody to do it unless they're sure that's, that's what they want. But about specifically about single parenting, if you think you can handle it, by all means, go for it. <laughs> when there's a separation or a divorce, what, had happened, what happens to you is that there is a break in your dream. It seems like a loss, you know. It's just that, unfortunately, divorce is an unending loss. Unlike, you know, death, the widow knows that, I mean, the man is gone, is gone, and he knows who snatched or what snatched the husband away and so you know you can channel your pain your everything but where a guy walks out from you you're separated you're divorced you're actually very clueless as to what happened marriage can actually be beautiful if you're in it with the right partner and so it will be it will be totally wrong to say that it is better to be single but um at the same time rather than being an abusive marriage in a marriage that is taunting you or pulling you down as an individual it is better to be single According to analysis, single parenthood can bring added pressure and stress to the job of raising a child, especially with no one to share day-to-day -day responsibilities or decision-making. But participants at this forum believe it's not the end of the world. Sarah Ayuku, Core TV News, Lagos. Now the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, and its subsidiary pipeline and product marketing company has moved to track the distribution of the premium motor spirit across the country, following worsening scarcity of the product across the nation. 
PPMC and NPC disclosed that it set up a learner and efficient organization to carry out the assignment of verification of sales in all the states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory. The cooperation, which released the figures of Friday's dispatch of product to filling stations to journalists, are that it will upload daily inventory on its website on a daily basis. It urged Nigerians to use the dispatch inventory to hold petrol stations accountable should they refuse to sell proportionately to their locations. Addressing journalists in Abuja, NNPC's Managing Director of Retail, Ladipo Fagbola, retold that the cooperation had directed its affiliate stations to operate for 24 hours with maximum security protection where necessary. Also speaking, PPMC Executive Director of Commercial, Justin Eziala, added that the new organization is a task force that is going around to see what is happening to the product that is supplied to Nigeria. Now, fuel scarcity continues to bite hard in the country. Residents in Kaduna State have urged federal government to beep its satellites and fuel marketer. Some of the motorists who spoke to Court of the News on the effects that is cost that a scarce product has affected them a lot. They said it is high time for this administration put an end to what they describe as embarrassing to the rich producing oil country, Nigeria. Hamina Nebi has known the support for Zinzep from our students. Residents of Kaduna Metropolis have urged the federal government to step up efforts and aim at reducing the unwarranted fuel scarcity. They call for steep penalty to fuel marketers and others who usually deviate the product for their own selfish interest. When Core TV visited, some of the filling stations are not dispensing fuel product, while others have increased the fuel price above its normal price. A commercial driver says his family depends on what he earns daily. I don't see any reason with our money, and we have everything in this Nigeria. We have the fuel. And the fuel is in the filling station, and they don't give up, they don't even give us, they don't even allow us to buy. And with our money, we join line here since money, from now, from money to now. You cannot even buy. And we have, it isn't that they don't touch us, we want to buy with our own money. We don't, don't tell them to beg us, we don't beg them to give us. We have our own money to buy, and we cannot even buy it. Upon suffering, we can't buy it. And we don't know the reason. So Nigeria should try and do something. Because we are tired of this changing, the money is not coming. And the one you have, you stress to get, you cannot even allow you to even enjoy the money. It's very uncomfortable. Nationwide, things seem to be taking its normal position just because of the new administration's body language. But of recent, things begin to return back to the old order. Another resident who believes that the country is facing huge mess says with the hardship going on and lack of money, looking at the little one you have, you cannot even enjoy it. They believe that the new administration have already made promises, but are yet to fulfill it. We'll take another quick break. I'll be back with stories from business, Porting House at Niger. Please don't go away. You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. When welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV. Live a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station. The 1988 set of economists from the Amadou Bailey University in Zaria has advised the federal government not to devalue the Naira but reduce cost of governance to rebuke the economy. The spokesman of the 1988 graduates of economics, Isiak Ajibola, gave the advice in Abuja at the annual meeting of the set. He said the best ways to rebuild the economy is to cut costs, saying that the government has demonstrated competence in that direction in its recent decisions. Ajibola, who is also a director in a national newspaper, described the Treasury's single account policy of the government as a very nice concept. 
The Department of Petroleum Resources has warned petroleum product marketers to desist from sharp practices of face sanctions, which will include the payment of two million naira fine on license revocation. DPR Director Mordecai Laden gave the warning against the backdrop of the purported resurgence of false scarcity in the country. He said that any petroleum product marketer who engages in the act of diversion, hoarding or under dispensing will be prosecuted and treated like an economic saboteur. Speaking to newsmen in Abuja, he warned petroleum product de depot and feeding stations owners to desist from product diversion, hurting pump manipulation, as well as certain products above government-approved prices. The DPR boss linked the resurgence of four queues in some states in the northern part of the country to the activities of unscrupulous marketers who are in the habit of diverting petroleum products to other sources apart from dispensing pumps at filling station at the appropriate price of its 7 naira per liter. The Pentagon says a U.S. airstrike has killed the leader of the Islamic State group in Libya, Iraq national Abu Nabi, also known as Wissam Naj Abzaid Abzuba, was a long-time Al-Qaeda operative and the senior IC leader in Libya. It says using another acronym for IS, the strike took place on Friday night. There was no word in the location. The Pentagon said the strike demonstrated it would go after IC leaders wherever they operate. Pentagon spokesman Peter Cook said the operation had been authorized and taken place before terrorist attacks in Paris on Friday evening. He added that Nabu may have been the IS spokesman pictured in a February 2015 video showing the apparent execution of Coptic Christians in Libya. Nabu's death would degrade ISIL's ability to meet the group's objective in Libya, including recruiting new ISIL members, establishing bases in Libya, and planning external attacks on the United States. He says Libya remains in chaos four years after the overthrow of Muammar Gaddafi and the growth of Islamic State there has worried Western governments. A magnitude 7.0 earthquake has struck off Japan's southwestern coast, triggering a small tsunami. The Japan Meteorological Agency says a 30-centimeter tsunami was registered on the southern Nakanoshima Island, part of Kagoshima's prefecture. There were no immediate reports of damage or injuries. A tsunami warning issued for Kagoshima and Sasuna Island were later lifted. The quake happened at a depth of about 10 kilometer. The U.S. Geological Survey says it, has, it was some 159 kilometers southwest of the town of Makurazaki. In 2011, a massive earthquake caused a tsunami that left more than 18,000 people dead or missing in northeastern Japan. Some 230,000 people have yet to return to their hometowns since the disaster. A security forces in the South Korean capital Seoul has clashed with protesters during one of the country's biggest street rallies in recent years. Police used tear gas and water cannons against demonstrators, demanding the resignation of conservative president Park Geun Hye. According to police, tens of thousands of people took part in a march that brought together various groups, including trade unions, opposed to the president's business-friendly politics. Others were protesting against the position of state-approved history school books, which they say whitewashed South Korea's past dictatorships. Security forces fired tear gas when some of them tried to break through police barricades as they moved towards the presidency. Park Gwen, South Korea's first female president, was elected two years ago. She's pushing through controversial plans to make the labor market more flexible by giving employers more leeway in dismissing workers. The dark matter particle explorer satellites that developed by the Chinese Academy of Sciences is expected to be launched at a Zhongquan Satellite Launch Center in mid-December. Dampe, the first satellite in a car space science program and its carrier long march to the rocket, has left Shanghai. Heading for Zhongan in northwest China's Gansu province. The satellite and carrier rockets are fully prepared for blast off after passing the inspection and approval of the cars. This will be the 26th mission for the long march to the rocket. DAMP is one of the first four scientific satellites employed in the CAS space program. 
It will observe the direction, energy, and electric charge of high energy particles in space in search of dark matter. For some stories and sports, the Pharaohs of Egypt have suffered a surprise one year loss to Chad in the first leg of their 2018 FIFA World Cup in Germania. A second half goal by Ezekiel Ndwasa ensured that the Chadians claimed a famous victory over one of Africa's powerhouses as the World Cup qualification on the continent continued to throw up shocking results. Interestingly, it was just two months ago that the Egyptians brushed aside the Chadians 5-1 in a 2017 Africa Cup of Nations qualifying match at the same venue. There was not going to be a repeat of such scoreline for Hector Cooper's man, who played with two strikers in Basim Mossi and Ahmed Azen. It was clear from the way Chad head coach Rigobert Sung set up his side to play the Egyptians that they were out to steam the North Africans from replicating the 5-1 scoreline of September in the Afghan qualify. The fans came for a celebration of football, a glamour friendly between France and world champions Germany in front of 80,000 fans at Paris's Shopee Stadium. Then explosions came when three loud explosions were heard from outside the stadium during the first half. Football soon drifted from the minds of the spectators and eventually murdered three people who had died near the arena in the north of the city. Later, the death toll claimed to five outside the glittering venue which staged the 1998 World Cup final with 11 seriously hurt and around 30 people slightly injured. It emerged that one of the explosions would near to McDonald's restaurant on the fringes of the stadium. French, state, French President Francois Hollande, who was in attendance at the game, was heard from the stadium amid the early reports of shootings in central Paris and of the developing hostage crisis in the Bataclan Theatre. The crowd still largely celebrated goals by Oliver Gerard and substitutes Andre Perel Gignet late in either half of the match to give France the win. Now, Russia's Athletics Federation has been provisionally suspended from international competition, including the Olympic Games, for its alleged involvement in widespread doping. The IAAF took action after the publication of an independent World Anti-Doping Agency reports the alleged state-sponsored doping. Its council members voted 22-1 in favor of Russia being banned. Russia's sport minister, Vatanin Motko, however, says the suspension is temporary and the problem is solvable. The country's IAAF council member was not allowed to participate in Friday's vote. Russia's athletes may now not enter international competitions, including the World Athletic Series and the Rare Olympics, which begins on the 5th of August 2016. Russia will also now be entitled to host the 2016 World Race Walking Cup in Chesbox Ray and 2016 World Junior Championship in Kazan. The forum says that unless the Russian Athletics Federation voluntarily accepts a full suspension, it is entitled to proceed to a full hearing on whether the provisional suspension should be made full. Russian Olympic Committee says it's ready to reform the country's athletics federation following accusations against Russia of widespread breach of anti-doping regulations. On Monday, a commission of the World Anti-Doping Agency published a report accusing Russia of violations of global anti-doping codes and recommended that the country be banned from international athletics, including the 2016 Olympics. Russian President Vladimir Putin later ordered an internal investigation into allegations of widespread doping practices along Russia athletes and corruption among coaches and officials and corruption in cooperation with international bodies. But that is a wrap on Court of the Primetime News. But before we go, a quick reminder of our major stories. Death toll, an eye sponsored attacks in Paris, France, breaches 129 as French presidents declare state of emergency. The Department of State Services again naps another high profile Boko Haram terrorist, Daladi Abdullahi, in May Dugaray.
And finally, the All Progressives Congress says the PDP must repent and return looted funds by members before Nigerians take it seriously. Many thanks for staying through with us tonight. I am Elijah Makola. Did you have a wonderful night? Just. <laughs>